Marvel Rivals Season 6 has just been released, and today I'm going to show you guys how to get the absolute best performance and image quality so you can go from this to this. So let's dive straight into it. The first thing I recommend downloading are the config files for my Google Drive. You can download the config optimized folder if you want higher performance while retaining the core art style of the game, or you could download the config potato if you are struggling to get playable frame rates. Here are what they look like, and you can see that the config potato looks like absolute cheeks, but hey, it does help with performance quite a bit, especially on older or even handheld PCs like the Steam Deck or ROG Ally. Feel free to choose whichever one fits your preference. Next, I recommend downloading the NVIDIA app. We're going to be using this to override to the newly released DLSS 4.5 preset L for better image quality and performance. And if you prefer using NVIDIA Inspector, that works as well. And the last thing I recommend downloading is Vibrance GUI. This little program lets us add digital vibrance on a per gamer application basis, and links to all of these will be in the description below. And with that out of the way, we can get to finally optimizing the game. All right, so before we get into the game, we're going to do some basic Windows tweaks just to make sure everything's set. So the first thing we're going to do is not open that and come over here to the search bar and type in game mode. Make sure that game mode is enabled. This is going to help prioritize your games as a foreground task and shut down a lot of the background telemetry that could be taking up some game resource. And also it helps with core parking if you have like a dual CCD CPU or a higher core count Intel CPU where it schedules the cores accordingly to what it needs. Next, you're going to click graphics and make sure that Marvel Rivals is on this list with high performance. Uh, this really doesn't matter too much, like if you can't add it here. This is only here if you want to make sure that your dedicated GPU is being used for the game on a Windows end. Like in the game itself, it knows which GPU to use. But just in case, you know, if your game is set to like the power saving or integrated graphics here that may have come with your laptop or your CPU, just make sure you're high like high performance dedicated graphics card is set here and click save. And then if you don't see the game here at all, for some reason, you can click browse and then you could find your game. So mine's going to be in Steam library. And then you just here follow this path and find Marvel win 64 shipping.exe and click add. Obviously mine's already here. So that's going to be it for this part. And then the other part you're going to do is change default graphics settings. Make sure that hardware accelerated graphics scheduling is enabled. This will help reduce latency and it will help with GPU bound scenarios where if um, many Unreal Engine 5 and Battlefield 6, even with the Frostbite, I have seen an increase in FPS by turning this on again in GPU bound scenarios. So there's not really any harm having this on unless you yourself are seeing a noticeable drop to the FPS for some reason. This could be an issue if you're super, super CPU bound. So you need to experiment with this, but for most people, you can keep it on. Next, optimizations for windowed games. This is really good if you're using for, um, blah, 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 full screen borderless. And uh, full screen borderless for all timing out of the game and stuff, this will help actually minimize the latency between full screen borderless and full screen exclusive. That used to be the case where full screen exclusive would give you the foreground priority task for the game and give you the lowest input lag. However, with DirectX 12, things have changed. This uses the new flip presentation metering model. So... You could just have this on if you like to alt tab out of the game and want no input lag from using borderless. It's pretty good. And uh, next, we're just going to take a look at the NVIDIA control panel real quick. I don't have an AMD GPU, so I can't really show you guys the adrenaline settings. But for those of you with NVIDIA, you guys can just copy this here. There's nothing really too mind blowing in here. It's just very simple stuff. Um, the only thing I recommend changing is shader cache size. This could help with weaker or older GPUs, especially if the driver defaults not cutting it. Uh, this also does help with games like Borderlands 4 and Elden Ring, just setting the shader cache size to higher than the default, which is probably like 4 gigs. If you have a lot of games installed with different shader caches, keep this at 10. You could use 100 or unlimited if you got a lot of space, but in my experience, you don't really need that. And then the rest you could just copy. Of course, if you want no screen tearing, you can use G-Sync or FreeSync. That's a personal choice, and that will lock your FPS along with V-Sync um, below your monitor's refresh rate. And that's going to be it for the NVIDIA control panel. And now let's look at the config files. So once you've downloaded the config files of your choice, go ahead and open it up. And then copy the game user settings and scalability files like this. And then press Windows plus R on the keyboard to open run. And type in percentage, local app data percentage, and press OK. And then scroll down to where it says Marvel, just the Marvel folder. So let me move this over here. Saved config, windows, and then you're going to want to copy and paste these two files in here. Now, most of you may not have the scalability to INI. You might just have these three and that's fine. This is the additional file that we have to add for the config. So just paste it in here and replace it. 
So what this scalability file does is it reduces global illumination quality, post-processing quality, and volumetric fog to give you guys more performance. Um, and that's going to be the same for the um, config optimized and the config potato. And that's pretty much all it does, as well as uh, set everything in the game to the proper settings it needs to be for highest performance. But of course, we'll be going into the game now so I could explain everything and show you what the uh, upscalers do as well. Okay, so once you're in the game, go ahead and open up your settings. And then we're just going to look at a couple of things. We're going to skip over the upscalers for now. We're going to go more in depth with it side by sides in a bit. So we're going to come down here to frame generation mode, and you're going to keep this off. If you take this game seriously, just keep it off. Uh, most of you are not going to be getting any benefits from this because of the input lag penalty, especially if your frame rate or your base frame rate is uh, low. Frame generation, you need to have like 200 to 250 plus FPS as a base for it to actually be negligible input lag. So if that's not you, just keep it off. Next is going to be low latency mode. Keep NVIDIA Reflex if you have an NVIDIA GPU. There might be an AMD anti-lag in here, but I can't see it because, again, I don't have an AMD GPU. And then Intel XELL is the newer one. Have not tested this yet, but for most of you, NVIDIA Reflex is going to be really, really good to cut down on the um, 10 to 20 milliseconds of input lag that the game does add. So just keep this on. Now, brightness, because the config files reduce or even turn off global illumination in a lot of the maps, you're going to want to go from 50 to 100 or even 80, depending on your monitor's brightness. Because I know the, a lot of the maps are actually going to have darker spots without the GI being active. So mess around with this and see what works best for you. And then you're going to come down here to uh, match FPS limit. You could choose whatever. I, I do suggest you cap your FPS though. Run this benchmark tool here. Okay. And then find out your average FPS. And then set the limit closest to that here. Or you could press custom and then just like set it yourself. This will help with making the game feel a lot smoother when you cap your FPS. It takes the stress off both your CPU and GPU when you're getting closer to your averages. And um, the frame buffer is synced basically to pump out one value here. It will further reduce input lag. It will improve frame pacing and it'll just make the game feel a lot smoother. So make sure you do this part. Um, and then lobby FPS, just keep 120. And then out background is like when you alt tab, it could be 30 FPS. So it's not wasting any resource. Show FPS, network stats. I um, mean, you can keep these two on if you want it here. You just see this part. VSync, obviously, keep this off. It adds input lag. And if you did want screen tearing to be gone, you should be using it in the NVIDIA control panel or the AMD adrenaline control panel. Then everything in here is just going to be the lowest graphic settings already from the config files. Um, you don't have to change anything in here. If you do, however, that's fine. That's up to you if you want to adjust anything on a per settings basis here. But if you just want to drag and drop the configs and play the game the way I showed it in the beginning of the video, how they look, then this is already set. So now we're going to go up here and take a look at all of these different upscalers so I could show you a side by side comparisons for image quality and performance. Here are all the upscalers that are most commonly used in the game. We'll start with DLSS 4.5 on the leftmost side, which is the latest preset L that released very recently. I will be showing you guys how to override Marvel Rivals to utilize DLSS 4.5 shortly after this comparison. Anyway, DLSS 4.5 preset L is set to ultra performance and does have superior image quality even at a lower upscaler setting than the rest. This is because it is intended to be used at ultra performance specifically. However, you could scale this to higher presets and quality based on how powerful your graphics card is. Next, we have Epic TSR at 1440p set to performance and it looks pretty decent in terms of image quality. However, you will notice some edge flickering at a distance as well as being slightly blurrier than DLSS. Then we have 1440p AMD FSR 3 at performance, which seems to be the least stable in terms of image quality. There is a lot more flickering and image instability at a distance, as well as looking blurrier in general. So I would avoid using this unless you specifically prefer it. For those of you with AMD 9000 GPUs, FSR 4 will be much better than this, so feel free to utilize that instead. Moving on to 1440p Intel XCSS performance, this seems to be the most stable next to DLSS. However, the performance is somehow worse if you're on um xcss on an nvidia gpu at least for me on a 4060 so it's better just to stick with dlss 4.5 since it's better overall anyway in terms of image quality and frame rate and last and certainly the least we have 1440p epic taau at 50 percent scaling which is the same internal 720p that the rest of the upscalers are running it looks as if somebody smeared vaseline on your eyeballs however the performance is much higher at the cost of you not seeing your enemies properly so i would fully avoid this one and now I'm going to show you guys how to override to the latest DLSS 4.5 preset. All right, so go ahead and open up the NVIDIA app. We are going to be using this to override to DLSS 4.5 right here. So first thing we're going to check in the settings and about is that you have 11.0.6.379. 
you are going to need this specific version of the NVIDIA app for DLSS 4.5 to work. And once you have that, you can come over to graphics. Oh, also for the driver, you could have the latest driver or some of the older drivers and it'll, it'll still work. So don't worry about that. Then come back to graphics, go to Marvel Rivals, scroll down to where it says DLSS override model presets. You're going to click this custom and then super resolution and go down to preset L. The reason why it's preset L is because, well, actually there's two new presets for DLSS 4.5. However, preset L is much more performant than preset M. Preset M, I'm only going to recommend for those of you guys with more powerful RTX 40 and 50 series GPUs. Uh, otherwise, you could stick to preset L for a balance of image quality and performance. This is a max FPS guide, so that's the one I'm going to recommend. And then you could press apply. And the next time you launch Marvel Rivals, you are going to see that the game is running in preset L. Um, but if you want to make sure if it's working or not, I'm going to show you how to do the overlay. So press Alt-Z on the keyboard click statistics, and then make sure that this statistics heads up display is on. So you see, you can see a bunch of stats here. The important one is going to be SR over NA. So for most of you, uh, if you've never done this before, it's going to be like this. It's going to be basic right here. So we're going to go to custom and then you can choose whatever you want to display in this overlay here. But the important one is super resolution model override. See, it's going to be at the end here. This right here in the game will say SR over preset L if it worked correctly, right? Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. You could just use this at a glance to see. And then if you want to turn it off, you could just press alt R on the keyboard to turn this overlay on and off like that. The reason I'm not showing you this in a game is because I use shadow play to record and it hides this overlay. So I'm gonna have to show it to you in here. And if you do feel like trying different presets, like, you know, you know, that DLSS 4 preset K, um, will work better for you at like performance mode. You could switch all the preset letters here. I do have a dedicated DLSS 4.5 video you can watch on the channel. It does have an explanation for all of this stuff. So feel free to go ahead and look at that one after this. But for the purpose of this video, stick to preset L and uh, just apply that. And now I'm going to show you a comparison between DLSS 3.5 that ships with Marvel Rivals natively and then DLSS 4.5. On the left side, we have DLSS 3.5 preset C. This is what comes with the game without any overrides. And on the right, we have the latest DLSS 4.5 preset L. And both of them are set to ultra performance in game, which is 480p internally. Now to get to the elephant in the room, yes, the performance difference is pretty big. However, we are in the training range and in a real match, you are most likely going to be CPU bound anyway. So the performance gap may not be as large as you see here. Either way, you can see that DLSS 4.5 is way better in terms of image stability and clarity. If we zoom into the plants, there is an immediately noticeable improvement in every way. The texture details are preserved with the new DLSS 4.5 and the dithered and pixelated look of the DLSS 3.5, which comes with the game, is almost completely gone. Like I said earlier, though, this is something to be experimented on based on how powerful your GPU is. You can mess around with the different DLSS modes, different presets to get the best image quality to performance ratio. And I'm not going to tell you what to use. I'm just going to show you some simple examples like this, just so you can get a baseline for it. Of course, feel free to use whatever you like and gives you the best experience. And now we'll move on to taking a look at the performance comparison between the config files so you can see how the FPS scales. So now all together, here is how the performance scales with the config files versus default settings. On the leftmost side, we have 1440p default settings. This is whatever the game chooses when you press the reset display settings button in the settings menu. Next, we have 1440p DLSS config optimized. This would be my preferred way to play the game as it retains the core art style while significantly boosting performance. And last, we have 1440p DLSS config potato, which is what it is. Uh, it definitely helps if you're struggling to get playable frame rates but it does heavily compromise on the visuals to attain it. If you want to get even higher performance, though, you will have to tune up your PC to get the most out of it. And since we're on the topic of tuning up PCs, if you're not getting the type of performance that you know you should be, then you can hit me up on Discord. I provide PC tuning services by debloating Windows, tweaking BIOS, as well as undervolting and overclocking your CPU and GPU so that we can fix any stuttering, crashing, and get the absolute best out of your PC. For those of you on higher end parts like what you see here on screen, I've tuned up PCs for many high level players across a wide variety of games. So if you want the best performance with the lowest input lag, definitely hit me up so that we can get all of your PCs running as good as possible with long term stability. Here's a quick benchmark tool result so you can see how the game runs when it's tuned up to the maximum. And now we'll move on to the final tutorial of the video, which is Vibrance GUI. All right, so for those of you who've downloaded Vibrance GUI, go ahead and open it up. It's just going to be this one exe file. You can keep it anywhere. It doesn't install on your PC or anything. And once you have it open, you could click Auto Start Vibrance GUI, affect primary monitor only, so it only affects the games you're playing on your main monitor, and never change resolutions. 
And so what this program does is it makes sure that you can add a digital vibrant slider to any game you want or application without affecting the entire Windows uh, digital vibrance uh, the way we used to do it in the NVIDIA control panel like this. So I'm sure a lot of you have, have done this where you added digital vibrance like this and that'll affect your entire Windows, which is not what you want if you're trying to do multimedia stuff like watching movies or TV shows as well as playing games. But now you can just do it in here and um, you can just add your game of choice. And look, you could add a digital vibrant slider like this, press save, and that's pretty much it. So the way you add it is by clicking add. And if your game is running, it's kind of like task manager here. You just select the game or you can add it manually by going to where it's installed. So Steam library, Steam apps, common, Marvel rivals, and then Marvel game, Marvel binaries, Win64, and then add Marvel Win64 shipping. Um, and once it's added in here again, choose your digital vibrance level. 50% 50, 50 is default. I prefer using like 80 and then press save. And now I'll show you what that looks like in game. On the left side, we have Vibrance GUI off or default 50%. And on the right, we have Vibrance GUI on with 80% on the slider. Like I said earlier, all it does is add digital vibrance to the game. So it's definitely a great little tool to have, especially since it has zero performance cost compared to something like NVIDIA filters or RTX Dynamic Vibrance. The game does look better like this, in my opinion. It really makes the colors pop a lot more. However, this all comes down to personal preference. So try it out for yourself and see what looks best for you. And with that, we've come to the end of the video. If this guide was helpful for you, you could help me out by hitting that like button and subscribe so you don't miss more guides like these for all your favorite games. I'll see you in the next one.